remember how to drive this thing. It's so complicated. No. I just put it in reverse and go. <laughs> oh, but it's really wanting to go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Man, that one just won't quit. Gate creaking over there. It's Sunday, New Year's Day. Guess what we're doing? Servicing Tiny Dancer. That's exactly what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna film it for you guys. I'm gonna try to do a step-by-step. -step. Fairly easy. Um, why am I doing it today? It's New Year's Day. Well, today is like the only day I have where the sun is actually sh shining and it's not bitterly cold and raining sideways and this has got almost four trips on it and it's due i uh it's probably got about 16 well it's got more because we picked it up so it's probably got 20,000 miles on the oil i don't like to go that far but being that the truck was getting such great fuel mileage and not working too hard i decided to stretch it out since the oil still looked great no i didn't smell it or analyze it or taste it well i probably didn't smell it but uh, I wasn't burning it, it was still staying clean, so I decided to stretch it out a little bit. And uh, we're probably gonna do about every four trips on this truck because it's getting like eight miles per gallon, so we can get away with that. Especially when we're using conventional oil. And I use conventional 1540. I don't like synthetic because synthetic is just, uh, well, synthetic. It's not like conventional or has a lot of zinc in it. So it's good to work. But we'll talk about some stuff here before we get started. I just shut it off so it's not going to be full. The oil is still draining back. But the oil doesn't look too terrible on it. I don't think we're going to replace that guy because if you guys remember, I talked about replacing it. Since TLG just didn't replace it. And, you know, it's doing good. Got a fuel filter for it. And I got oil filters. It actually uses the same oil filters as Fancy does. Also, I'm gonna show you guys one thing. So this is the same drain valve that I got on Fancy. Maybe it's a little bit better quality actually. But this makes your life a whole lot easier. It's gonna go down there where the drain plug is. Now, this truck's a little low. Actually, the engine sits a lot lower than in Fancy because Fancy's a Kenworth. Kenworths like to stand tall. So we got her blocked up. It's probably about four inches off the ground. And it's just enough room to get my buckets under it. Now we're probably gonna make a little bit of a mess here today because A, it's windy. So it's probably gonna splatter oil, but I got a little shield, so we should be all right. And B, um, well, we can only fill five gallons at a time. So we're gonna have to scoot one bucket over and fill the other one. And it's going to be coming out so we're going to have to figure out a way maybe i will get a pan i don't know but i don't really want to buy a pan for one time use so yeah but if i have to i will maybe it would make life a little bit easier and then i could just transfer into my buckets and take it to the dump but anyway this guy here makes life a whole lot easier air filter was just done not long ago we might take a look at it and see how that goes i don't have an air filter for it but i might order one 
and uh, that valve. We're gonna put that in. I think I will go to to town and try to find a pan because I feel that I'm just gonna make a huge mess of oil here. We don't want that. So we're gonna still want to fancy these oil filters here. I have the same filter. Actually, it's a so this is a LF one four zero 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 NN. I've seen the X15s with LF one four zero 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 one NN, but they look exactly identical. Now mine has this exact same filter on. It's the same part number, so we're just gonna go with that. So you want to take our, this is a 19 millimeter plug and you want to crack it loose and don't take it all the way out. Get your bucket under it. So I changed the plans because the parts store didn't have buckets big enough. So we're going to, or, or pans. So we're going to go and make a mess. Hopefully not too bad. We'll just scoot it over and uh, hopefully it won't be too bad. A little bit of a mess, but I'll yeah, we'll clean that up later. Let it all drain out. And we'll put our valve in, and we won't have to ever mess with that again. But first, let's get all this oil out. Most of it was captured by the tray. I think if I moved the tray more forward this way, I would have prevented my driveway getting splashed. But hey, oh well. Now, the only issue that I see over here is this oil filter. We're gonna have to be careful with it because I don't really think we can puncture it that well because our axle is right underneath it, as you can see. So we can't put our bucket under it. So we're just gonna have to be careful and break it loose slowly and uh, drain it out into the bucket. So we're gonna take our valve. It's got an O-ring on it. It doesn't need any kind of sealant because it already has an O-ring on it. We're gonna go ahead and close this valve though. Oops, that's exactly what you guys want to see. And this doesn't open very easily, so but we want to close the valve so it keeps the oil from leaking. And hopefully we don't drop it in there. No, oh, our bucket's in the way, so I'm going to have to... I have to let it drain and move this stuff out of the way. Oh, it looks like most of the oil is out. So we got our guy in, and I gotta just tighten it up. Alright, so now we're going to get at this oil filter and hopefully we don't make too much of a mess. Because we can't really drain it. There she is. She is loose. All right, we didn't really 
make too much of a mess. So now we're gonna get our new filter and we're gonna get a gallon of oil that we have laying around. And why is this oil upside down? Well, it's got a hole in it for some reason, but we wanna pre-fill this filter. Now, that's a gray area. Some places do not want you to do that because contamination. Sorry about that sound, guys. Anyway, Caterpillar for like one place, one engine manufacturer, they don't want you to pre-fill. Now, because contamination. What contamination? That's my opinion is you're putting fresh oil in it. I mean, I get it. It's not as pure as filtered oil, but I think it's, uh, it's not that dirty. So I always pre-fill my oil filter, always. The reason being is I'd rather have a little contamination in there than having a dry start for, I don't know how long it takes to fill that filter when that oil pump starts to turn in. But that thing takes like over half a gallon of oil, about three quarters of a gallon of oil. So by the time it takes to fill that filter, you're spinning that motor kind of dry without any oil pressure. So it's probably not that good for it. And it's not that long, but I'm always going to pre-fill my filter. I'm a firm, a firm believer in pre-filling my oil filter. So do as you please, guys, but I would strongly suggest pre-fill your filter. And you want to get it inside that filter. You don't want it up here. See, it's kind of starting to go down, but you don't want it up in this area. You want it down there. It, it's eventually gonna, it's eventually gonna sink in there and do all its thing. That's probably good enough. And I like to take some oil and put it on the seal. So when you're coming in here next time doing this, you can get it off. But that's about enough. She's about, oh, pretty full. Let's go slam it on. Wipe her threads off a little bit. Not too bad. And again, we're gonna go in from underneath. So I think they have to turn this. You don't wanna be over full on this filter because then you just spill it everywhere. Get it on the threads and carefully get it started. And sometimes they're a pain. There we go. If you hold it from the bottom and then support the side here by the frame rail, you'll eventually get it. There we go. So again, put my hand in over here and then hold it from the bottom and you'll be able to get it on those threads. You don't want to cross thread it because then it's going to leak. So another issue is how do you tighten your filter? A lot of guys just hand tighten them. Um, that's what I do. But I put a little bit of pressure with the filter wrench on there. Well, some guys will tell you that that's all you need is just hand tight and as much as you can by hand and they won't come off. Well, guess what? I've had one come off. Not in the semi truck, I have one come off in a car. I don't want to have one come off in the truck. Now, the first time 
uh, when I did Fancy's oil change, I went to a shop, okay? And that's kind of why I quit going to a shop, convenience. But the main reason why I quit going to a shop is the oil filter was loose. It was leaking. It was leaking actually oil out the side. And I was like, what in the hell is going on? Pop the hood. I look at it and the oil filter's loose. It was loose enough where it was leaking oil. So, well, the small fellow that I am, I tightened it up. Now, you don't want to go too tight. Obviously, you don't need to go too tight, but you want to go good and snug. It's better off to use a filter wrench to have to get that guy off than to lose it going down the road. And again, if you prefer to hand tighten it and you've done it all your life and that's all you've done, it's all your engine. I don't have a problem with it. I personally, from my experience, I'm always going to snug it up with the wrench. And I'm not talking about like two turns or torquing it with an impact or or, or, or an impact wrench. Just, just, you know, you got to feel for it. So that's what I'll do. And... I'll use this guy. So this guy here, I don't want to damage the filter. So I'm not clamping down too tight. I'll put a rag in between it so it doesn't damage the filter. Usually it won't. Um, and I, I just get it a little snug. Because like I said, I don't want that guy coming off. All right, give it a good turn. All right, that's about as hand tight as it's gonna get. We're gonna put a wrench on it, gently. Gently just tighten it up a little bit. That's it. I know, I know, that was my own stupidity right there. I should have had that pan more over this way. But you know what gets that out? Starting fluid right out we want to tighten our new drain valve and the problem with this is I don't have a wrench big enough for this guy so we got our adjustable hammer. That's what I call these guys, adjustable hammers. Good and tight. So now all you gotta do is next time is just boop, open it up. And I'm not gonna do that because I don't have anything underneath here and I don't wanna make more oil. And there's always gonna be a little bit of oil left in there. So now let's go put oil in there. Fire up. There's my custom made uh, funnel for our Cummins with a chopped off end. Get to keep those five gallon buckets in there.
full. And fire up. So now we're going to fire it up. Um, I still have to do the fuel filter. There's that 579 door pop. I still have to do the fuel filter. But the way I do things, and the reason why, is to prevent as much of a dry start as possible. Um, now, yes, the oil pump oil pick up with the key turning if you need to prime the engine but it's better off if you have the actual engine running so after i do the oil i change the oil i fire the truck up let it build oil pressure go outside check for leaks especially on the fuel i mean why do i keep calling it the fuel filter it's the oil filter i'm not even doing oil the fuel filter yet around the oil filter check for leaks make sure you're good and uh let it run for a few minutes let it build the oil pressure and uh, shut it off, let it do its thing, drain the oil back down. In the meantime, you can do the fuel filter because if you get any kind of air in your fuel system, you're just gonna be sitting there cranking it and cranking it and cranking it. So at least that way you got fresh oil throughout the engine and it's somewhat protected. Not that it wouldn't be anyway, because there's always a little bit of film of oil left in the motor, obviously, but the fresher the oil, the better. So that's my theory behind that. I like to have the engine pre-lubed before I mess with the fuel filters. And the fuel filters is a whole other thing, which we'll get into in a second. So that's our gauge we're going to watch. And it's got to change. It might fluctuate because the oil filter is not totally primed and full, but it's full enough where it should instantly build oil pressure. outside. Some say that five seconds is good enough or 10 seconds is good enough. I like to let it run for, you know, 30 seconds at least. Reason being is sometimes there is a little bit of air trapped in that filter and it takes a little bit for it to circulate. And sometimes you'll see your oil pressure go up, go down and then go back up. That's that air pocket that's kind of trapped in there. And I'll let it run for a little bit longer. Most of your shops, they'll make, have you fired up. And as soon as you see oil pressure, have you shut it off. Let it run a little bit longer. It won't hurt it. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and I get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and I get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up. Ooh, I've been on the flex since flex zone. 